Welcome to the Three Martini Lunch. Grab a stool next to Greg Corumbus of Radio America and Jim Garrity of National Review. Three Martinis coming up. Hey, really glad you're with us for the Wednesday edition of the Three Martini Lunch. It's a special edition of the podcast. No good, bad, and crazy today, although I guess you could say it's all good because today is our annual episode of Things We Are Politically Thankful For. Uh, We are always, uh, of course, very thankful for health and our family and our faith and uh, just uh, the fact that we get to do this podcast. We'll probably talk about that a little bit more at the end of our time together today, but uh, it's one of my favorite podcasts we do each year, the things we're politically thankful for because there's so many bad martinis throughout the year. Jim, so uh, Jim will start off and then we'll kind of ping pong back and forth and we'll each have three things that we're thankful for. So Jim, what's at the top of your list this year? It kind of glaring. I think it's just a demonstration of why Thanksgiving 2021 is going to be different from Thanksgiving 2020. Listeners, I am really glad that all, so many of us will have the opportunity to safely gather again around the table, face to face, none of this socially distanced crap <laughs> we had to go through last year. Um, I have a piece that by the time you're listening to this, maybe will have already been posted on National Review. The editors never tell me anything. Um, but the gist <laughs> is that we tried to, you know, look, if you, your last year pre-vaccines, uh, you know, many of us have elderly relatives, know people who are immunocompromised, and it just didn't seem like a safe thing to do. Now, if you got together with your family last Thanksgiving, that's great. I'm not telling you you're, you know, reckless or bad or anything like that, but I just, you know, um, we chose to, for, you know, in the interest of protecting everyone as much as possible, uh, hold it socially distanced last year and, um, folks, it sucked. It, it, it's, yeah, it was, it was lousy. Um, connecting with people through screens just isn't the same. We had a nice, we made the best of it. Uh, my older son was actually a pretty good cook. It turns out made this great kind of, uh, apple chimichanga dessert, um, it wasn't, you know, we, we, but it was one of those things like we don't, particularly when you're at a time when we're all doing a Zoom calls and the kids are doing distance learning, you know, just seeing more people on a screen wasn't it. I don't know about you, Greg. I don't know about you listeners, but really, you know, Thanksgiving to me is about being at my in-law's house. My mother-in-law always cooks up a storm. Um, that is the plan for this year. And it looks like it's going to be fantastic. Uh, I like to get up every morning, read the paper, watch the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I love to complain about the musical numbers uh, and the celebrities I've never heard of and how NBC sitcom stars just happen to be in the audience and all that kind of stuff. And I love to see the giant balloons and I love to see somebody with dressed up like, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants getting dragged away by the wind, you know. And then I like to watch the Detroit Lions lose. No offense to the Detroit Lions fans out there, but that's part of the traditions there as well. Uh, when Dallas plays, usually around that time, we're eating. And I like to lapse into a tryptophan coma, uh, you know, right, right after the meal. So, this is yeah, that's what Thanksgiving is. And last year we couldn't do it. So this really feels like the first real Thanksgiving we've had in a two-year span. And I'm just so thankful for that. You don't realize what you have in life until you lose it. Uh, and I hope everybody out there gets to have a similar experience this year. I think a lot of people uh, share that uh, thankful spirit when it comes to being able to gather together face-to-face instead of screen-to-screen is going to be a huge, huge plus. And uh, it's just getting back to normal. I know some people are uh, hesitant and even <laughs> almost maniacal about not letting normal happen, but uh, we're getting there, hopefully, and hopefully the rest of the normalcy will will happen soon. But uh, yeah, uh, hopefully a lot of progress in the past year. Jim, I'm going to go a little more political with my first one. Uh, it's a little selfish because we live in Virginia, but I'm happy about the election results uh, earlier this month. Uh, Virginia I think calling it a purple state heading into this year was being generous to the Republican Party. The Republican Party of Virginia had largely been in disarray. They'd had a couple of close calls in statewide races, but had lost them all over the the last 12 years. And if you looked at uh, the presidential race in recent cycles, not particularly close. If you look other than 2014 in the U.S. Senate, uh, not particularly close. But this year, what I like to call the perfect storm helped Republicans sweep the statewide offices. And it looks like, despite these uh, recalls that are ongoing, they'll control the House of Delegates as well. 
And uh, the perfect storm was, number one, Joe Biden's popularity was thoroughly in the tank. Uh, He's lucky if he's at 40 percent in some polls when it comes to approval. A lot of them, he's more in the mid 30s. And when that's close to northern Virginia, that always has an effect. It hurt Trump in 2017, uh, and it's usually hurt the incumbent in most cycles uh, beyond that. Uh, Also, Terry McAuliffe was a deliciously horrible candidate, especially down in the home stretch, telling parents they had no business telling teachers what they could teach or school districts what they could teach to our kids. That certainly did not go over well and helped uh, Yunkin, uh, the Republican nominee, uh, dent the uh, the damage in the northern Virginia counties, which is where a lot of the population is and are heavily blue, but he did much better there than most Republicans in recent cycles. And of course, the school issue itself uh, was a huge factor, but also uh, I think for especially for a rookie, a very well-run, well-disciplined, largely gaff-free campaign from Glenn Youngkin, uh, who's going to become governor in January, made very few mistakes while Terry McAuliffe seemed to step on every rake in the field. And that helped win some Sears and Jason Miaris went statewide as well as lieutenant governor and uh, and attorney general. And uh, Jim, we still live in the bluest part of the state, so the local officials are still going to do some crazy things. But hopefully uh, the insanity is going to stop to a large degree coming out of Richmond, at least in the next four years. All right, Jim. Uh, We're also thankful for sponsors here at the Three Martini Lunch. Uh, Day after day, week after week, we're very grateful for their support. And one of them is the X Chair, which I'm pretty sure you're thankful for every day. Greg, this is one of the easiest. It's an underrated aspect of something to be thankful for. The chair that is holding up the butt and the rest of me all day long as uh, as I'm recording this podcast and doing my work. Listeners, you've probably heard me describe it before. Yes, it's got all the doodads. It's got all the bells and whistles. It can heat. It can vibrate. It can cool you down. It's extremely comfortable. I think the biggest and most consequential change, and I had a perfectly fine one, but it's one of those things you just, you, when you sit in a good chair that is properly contoured for your back and shoulders and neck, you feel it. And if you find yourself working in a different kind of chair, like if you're, you know, working at the kitchen table or maybe you're, you know, on a, on a you know, business trip and you're working at the hotel desk or something like that. It's not the same. You, you can just kind of tell in your neck, your back and all kind of stuff. You just, you could feel it and it can really louse you up after a day or two. So go out, get yourself an X chair. I know it sounds like something Professor X would roll around in or something like that. It really is worthy of that, uh, of that cool moniker. Um, take care of your back, take care of your arms, your shoulders, every part of you. This chair will, will be worth it, and you will thank me later. Go to xchairmartini.com now. That's the letter X, chair, M-A-R-T-I-N-I.com, or call 1-844-4X-CHAIR for $100 off your order. X Chair has a 30-day guarantee of complete comfort, and you can finance your purchase for as little as $30 per month. Again, xchairmartini.com. All right, Jim, on to our second round of things we're thankful for politically this year. Where do you go? You know, I, I was contemplating echoing you on uh, on the, the recent elections here in Virginia and the uh, prospects for a dramatic change in both government policies and kind of filtering down to the local level. But I'm going to, after the last two years we've had, I've learned, look, things can always get worse and you should appreciate what you have. So something of a small miracle, at least in my particular neck of the woods and my sense of most across the area, across the, the state of Virginia, our schools are open. Our schools are open five days a week, and they have been since uh, mid to late August in, in Authenticity Woods. Uh, I do know that over in Maryland for a stretch, I think it was like Montgomery County, if anybody in the class had the sniffles as a precaution, the entire class was sent home and basically canceled out of the prote- precaution of COVID-19. <laughs> Knocking on wood, so far this year, every Friday, I get a school a call from my, or I get a note from the uh, high school my son goes to and the elementary school my younger son goes to. And they give us, you know, one person in your school has been tested positive for COVID-19. If you've not been contacted by phone, your student is, your, your child is not at the high risk of exposure, yada, yada, yada. And I'm struck by the number of weeks, it's one or two. So there's one or two things work going on, Greg. Either Authenticity Woods Public Schools is lying through their teeth and there are a lot more cases they just don't want to tell anybody. Or we really just haven't had that many cases around here. And we've got high vaccination rates. And kids are at low exposure. And maybe kids are getting exposed, but they're asymptomatic. But all in all, it's been a really mild year in terms of COVID-19. The kids have not, been uninter- have not had their school year interrupted like in other parts of the country. No back, not back to distance learning, which I think was a, a real disaster for a lot of kids, particularly the kids who needed the most help. 
And uh, Greg, it's you know, I'm just very thankful that my kids are back in school because one, listeners won't hear them in the background as I'm recording these podcasts anymore. <laughs> Don't have to worry about the kitchen noises. And then the secondly, um, now the only thing I have to worry about is the possibility of the school closing because of snowflakes. And I don't mean metaphorical, whiny millennial snowflakes. I mean actual snowflakes, which have shut down the schools in the past. Which raises the question, because they know they can do virtual now. Do we still have snow days? Or will they just make everybody hop on their laptop? I don't know, Greg. The teachers would have to, have to work days like that. So I don't think they'll do that. <laughs> Love you, teachers. Don't, don't take it out of my kids. They still build them into the calendar, I think. So if that's the case, then you probably should still still get them off. Uh, Jim is going far more personal than I am on this, so I'm going to stick to my list here anyway, because uh, this is something that you know feels kind of stiff compared to, to uh, kids being able to go back to school. But I'm thankful for the filibuster, Jim, uh, because... Oh, that's a good one. That was also on my list. <laughs> It was one or the other. <laughs> thankful for kids getting an education. Thankful for the filibuster. I'm going with the filibuster here. Uh, although uh, my kids are getting a fantastic uh, education right now as well. But the filibuster is saving us from a lot of horrible, horrible things happening. And the fact that the filibuster is still there means you also have to be thankful to some extent for Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema because they are the only Democrats willing to stand up for this thing when then just a couple of years ago, uh, when, of course, Republicans controlled the Senate, uh, you know, he had Dick Durbin and all these other Democratic leaders saying democracy itself is on the line if we weaken the filibuster in any conceivable way. But of course, now that they have the power, democracy <laughs> is the issue because, you know, majority should rule, even though they don't really have a majority. Uh, it's 50 to 50. But, uh, you know, as we have said recently, I think some version of this horrendous spending bill is probably going to get done. But it's going to be not as bad as what House Democrats and most Democrats in the Senate wanted to get done. And uh, that's all being done through reconciliation, which doesn't involve the filibuster. But there's a bunch of other horrible stuff, whether it's uh, the Democrats attempt to federalize our elections, which would be a total disaster. Uh, the Equality Act uh, is another one that would uh, dampen religious freedom, certainly in this country. Uh, and on and on with their list of things that they can't get done without 60 votes. And even though pretty much across the board, especially for cinema, maybe a little less for Manchin, actually supports the legislation, but uh, actually respects the institution and the reason we have the filibuster enough to keep it in place, meaning that those things won't get done. And hopefully, if uh, election night 2021 is, in, is any indication, uh, election 2022 will go about the same and Republicans will be back in control. That is a good point. Uh, I, as you're describing that, Greg, it suddenly dawned on me. Maybe the problem is that when Democrats say the word democracy, what they mean is me getting what I want. So if you know the filibuster is you know vital for democracy when they have the minority in the Senate, well, what they mean is the filibuster is vital for us getting what we want, not allowing the Republicans to pass this legislation. And when the filibuster becomes a threat to democracy, when they're in the majority, what they mean is it's a threat to us getting what we want because we have a majority, but we don't have 60 votes. Yeah, apparently Republican votes don't count because Bernie Sanders has repeatedly said, I can't believe that two people can, uh, can derail this. Well, no, 52 people, which is more than you have on your side of this issue uh, are opposed to this. So that's your problem, Bernie. But, you know, uh, in addition to uh, the things that we can stop, at least for the moment, uh, the Democrats from getting done, they're still doing their darndest, especially through these massive spending bills, uh, to destabilize our economy. We've got the supply chain crisis. We've got massive inflation, and these bills are only going to make it worse. And so with the dollar fluctuating all over the place, you want to diversify your investment portfolio, and gold and silver can be an excellent addition to that. And look, the price of silver has actually increased 340% since the year 2000. And it continues trending higher and higher. And so if you're interested in learning more about this and possibly investing in gold and silver, there's no better place to do it than Universal Coin and Bullion. Universal Coin and Bullion is offering our listeners a special locked-in price of just $30 for a beautiful one-ounce 2021 American Silver Eagle coin, which just happens to be the most popular coin in the world for collectors and investors. This limited offer is available at dealer's cost because Universal Coin wants you to own the first newly designed silver bullion coin since President Reagan signed the Gold Bullion Act in 1985. Call Universal Coin, the leaders in the precious metals industry, at 1-800-UCB-GOLD to get your beautiful U.S. Mint silver coin for only $30. Postage is free and you can rest assured knowing you are dealing with the experts. 
Look, you want someone who does the job well, and you want someone you can trust, and that's UCB. Dr. Mike Fulgens, their company's president, is recognized as America's gold expert by our government, and he's the 2021 Coin Dealer of the Year. UCB also has rare gold coins, but this special silver deal is only available using the code MARTINI. So call Universal Coin and Bullion now, 800-UCB-GOLD. That's 800-UCB-GOLD. All right, Jim, on to the third thing you are thankful for this Thanksgiving season. Well, at the risk of being even more personal, <laughs> this, one is gonna, uh, this one is one I think I, you and I will, will share, and maybe we will align on our final selection of the day. Listeners, I'm thankful for you. Um, at the risk of sounding like one of those flight attendants at the end of your flight, we know you have a choice in what podcasts you listen to. And every day, or at least every weekday, Greg and I get together, and we toss around ideas of what topic we want to talk about. And if you've been listening to this podcast, we try to have fun with it. We know the news is not always bright or cheery. Um, the, the kind of the usual trifecta that we offer you is that usually something in the world is going on that's good for conservatives. Something that's, uh, oh, by the way, if you're not conservative and you're listening to this podcast, thank you. We, we do want to appeal to people who are uh, not necessarily politically groovy. Hopefully we're entertaining. Hopefully we're insightful. Hopefully you learn something or get some sort of enjoyment out of it. And if you don't, well, that's your problem. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we, 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 we acknowledge that there are bad things that happen in this world and every once in a while, a, a new story will be big enough and, and consequential enough that we'll just have to talk about it. And you can tell that's when Jim and Greg use their very serious voices. Unfortunately, the world really does have horrible stuff like this and we can't, um, avoid it. It's we're, we're not a comedy show, although we do like to laugh and we hopefully are making you laugh as we keep you updated on what's going on in the day. And I think our recognition that there are certain events that happen in this world that are just flat out crazy. Look, Greg is a bright guy. I like to think that I, I've you know, written a, a wise thing or two uh, in my years, but we don't have all the answers. There are certain times things will happen in this world that just feel crazy. And we try to we just summarize it all for you. We try to keep it moving. We try to keep it light. We try to keep it uh, uh, you know, witty and insightful and all that stuff. Um, judging by the uh, you know reviews and on iTunes, and by the way, thank you for that. As, as Greg likes to say, uh, if you if give us we like your five star reviews, four stars okay. If it's three stars or less, keep your opinion to yourself. We don't really want those. Um, but if you put that all together, people really seem to get something out of it, and I'm glad. I'm thankful. This is oftentimes one of the highlights of my day. Um, Greg does almost all of the work. I just show up and talk. He makes it sound so good. And one of the last thing I, I hear, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad to have heard this from our listeners, so many people, Greg, you look at those comments, I, my emails, when I talk to people at NR events, so many people go to our, listen to our show and they, when they have a chance to meet me, they say, Jim, I love what you and Greg do. I love that it's short. I love that it's only 20 minutes or so. So apparently that's the amount of time in somebody's commute uh, or somebody's uh, walk or something like that. So I'm just very glad that... Uh, listeners, you and I, and we have all met each other and we were able to make each other's days a little bit better five times a week. Fantastic. Very well said. Yeah, we are extraordinarily grateful for our listeners. You're the reason we get to keep doing this. Uh, we're grateful for our sponsors, of course, as well. And for, you know, our bosses who uh, have uh, blessed this now for more than 11 years. Uh, it's definitely my favorite uh, part of my job. And uh, I, I'm grateful for you, Jim. Very easy to work with. There's a lot of people in this uh, business in terms of media and politics who uh, are always walking into the room and wondering who the second most important person is. But uh, uh, Jim's just very down to earth. Great guy. Uh, love his family. And uh, so very much fun to do this day after day, week after week, year after year. But listeners, we are extraordinarily grateful for you. We thank you for interacting with us on uh, Twitter and in other comment sections. It's it's great to hear your feedback. Uh, even the stuff where you don't necessarily love what we just said, it's still good to hear. Uh, but we still... Uh, you know, the, the highest ratings are the ones we love the best, certainly. But uh, we're grateful that you make us part of your day. We know your lives are busy. So whether it's part of your commute, part of your jog, whatever it is, thank you, thank you, thank you for including us. We hope you have a fabulous Thanksgiving. I know, uh, Jim, uh, we both uh, consider ourselves uh, blessed to have family to spend Thanksgiving with, family we genuinely love and enjoy to be around. And that is a, a huge blessing. God has richly blessed us uh, again this year, and we have so much to be thankful for. So uh, Jim, I hope your time with your family and your, your, your travels are, are safe and, uh, and joyful and restful. And uh, I look forward to uh, being back with you on uh, Friday for our, our Black Friday special. 
Greg, it's Interstate 95 the day before Thanksgiving. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing could possibly go wrong. No gridlock whatsoever. We should point out there will be an encore presentation of our episode from the day after Election Day. So if you're interested in reliving three really delicious martinis on Thanksgiving Day, by all means, uh, partake of that. But uh, Jim and I will be back uh, on Friday, as I said, with our Black Friday special, which means political gifts, gifts we would uh, buy on Black Friday for different political figures. And then starting again on Monday, we'll be back to our usual fare as we uh, cruise ahead towards the holiday season. So, Jim, happy Thanksgiving. See you on Friday. See you Friday, Greg. Jim Garrity, National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America. Thanks very much for being with us today. As we just said, uh, thank you so much for your kind reviews and your five-star ratings. Please do keep those coming. Uh, get us on those home devices. All you have to say is play Three Martini Lunch podcast. Follow us on Twitter. He's at Jim Garrity. I'm at Dateline underscore DC. Happy Thanksgiving. And join us again next time for the Three Martini Lunch. Hi, this is Greg Corumbus, and I'm here with Dr. Mike Fulgens. He's the president of Universal Coin and Bullion. Mike was recently named the 2021 Dealer of the Year by the American Numismatic Association. Mike, once your genuine gold and silver is delivered securely to my doorstep, what is the best way to safely store it? And how can I go about selling it once I'm ready to do so? Well, I recommend storing your gold and silver at a safety deposit box, except maybe keeping a little bit in a safe at home. And do not put the safe in your master bedroom or bathroom. That's the first place in a break-in that the bad guys go. And I would say that uh, I would uh, encourage people to ask for our free gold guide, which has been voted the best in the industry, which has an interview with law enforcement on things to do to reduce the chance of theft in the future. Dr. Mike Fulgens is recognized as America's gold expert by the U.S. government. Contact Mike and his team of professionals at Universal Coin and Bullion to own your gold and silver coins now. Call 1-800-UCB-GOLD.